And the gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For I truly tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the, the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. May God add his blessing to the hearing and understanding of his word. I'm not going to skip it today. Who wants to pray for the preacher and her preaching this morning? We got time. We can wait. Somebody behind me? Who's behind me? You going to pray? Come on up. Can you go over to the microphone at the back there and pray? Thank you, Judy. Please help Pastor Terry um, through the, uh, all of her life. Please let God bless her to be the best Pastor Terry she can be. And thank you, God, for blessing us with Pastor Terry. Uh, amen. See, I told you the kids got it nailed, right? Um, I told the folks at the early service, every single time I ask children, no matter how old or young they are, if they're under teenage years, then I say to them, somebody doesn't have a house, what do you do? They all say the same thing. They don't say, build them a house, give them a house, give them money for a house, give them rent money, lend them something. They say, invite them to live with you. That's a lesson for each of us. So thank you, Ms. Kaylee. Now, my husband has something called multiple system atrophy, which is what Pushpa's husband also died from. One of the things that happens with multiple system atrophy is your blood pressure drops when you stand up. It's called orthostatic hypotension. Now, before this, my husband, before he was diagnosed with his multiple system atrophy, he was diagnosed with heart disease, and his doctor said, you've got to cut out all salt. can't add salt to anything. And my husband was just so sad. Anybody else ever hear that message, no more salt, cut it back? Because we do get salt from sources other than that shaker. My father was one who would sit at the table and say, where's the salt shaker? And I'd say, the, the food was correctly seasoned before it arrived at the table. He'd say, oh, that remains to be seen, but he would put it on without even tasting it. Did anybody here do that? Have any people who salt their food before they even taste it? You're not going to admit to that here, are you? <laughs> but when my husband's blood pressure started to drop, the doctor said, I want you to just pour on the salt from now on. He was like, what'd you say? He said, pour on the salt, as much salt as you want, even more salt. My husband was never so happy in all his life. He was doing, like, you know, Ethan up here with his shaker. That was my husband with his salt shaker. Now, Jesus had something to say about salt. You're the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Who do you say that about? Have you ever said that about somebody in your life? He or she is the salt of the earth. What, what are the qualities that person has? Yell them out. Somebody's the salt of the earth. What are they like? Kind. What, Jeremiah? Valuable. Valuable. Amen. What else? Generous. Godly. Righteous. Respectable. Respectful. All those good things that we see in people that we say, that is the salt of the earth. And then Jesus said, you all might be the salt of the earth, right? Or you could be the salt of the earth. You have within you to be the salt of the earth. Is that what Jesus said? You just heard it read and you've heard it so many times. Did he say, each of you has the potential to become like salt? Now, what did he say? You are what? 
You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Not you might be the salt of the earth. You're the salt of the earth. Now, does that give you much choice in what you're going to do with your life? If you're the salt of the earth, you're going to have to pour it on, right? What does it mean to be the salt of the earth? The only way to look at that is to look at what it means not to have salt on the earth. Because what does Jesus say? If salt loses its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but it's thrown out and trampled underfoot. Any scientists here this morning? Oh, good. So I can make some stuff up. No, I, I really researched this as much as I could. Salt cannot stop being salty. Did you know that? It can't stop being salty. It cannot stop. It is by its very nature salty. So Jesus is saying, you are this and you cannot change. This is who you are. So I also looked up how many uses there are for salt. Give me a guess. How many, how many things can salt accomplish in the world? 14,000. We're going to name them all this morning. All right, start. Now you know what salt does, right? What does salt do? What are some of the, it preserves things, right? It can preserve fish for winter. It can preserve ham if you like country ham. What else does it do, Jeremiah? For trading? Yeah, people used to trade salt all the time because it was such a valuable commodity. What else does salt do? Flavor. Flavor. Amen. How many of you like popcorn and potato chips without salt? Popcorn and potato chips are salt delivery systems in my world. What else does salt do? What else do you use salt for? We haven't had a lot of ice and snow this winter, but what do you do when it's icy outside? Sprinkle some salt, it's gonna melt the salt. Anybody have a cast iron skillet at home? How are you supposed to clean that the right way? Not soap and water, but salt, because it can be abrasive, it can clean. How many of you have gargled with salt water if you had a sore throat? Or soaked your foot in salt water if you had a splinter in it, because it'll pull it out. What else does salt do? It does what? Brings out the best in other things. Anybody ever leave the salt, the half teaspoon of salt out of your chocolate chip cookies and then eat them and go, what is wrong with this cookie? It's because it doesn't have any salt in it. Salt doesn't just give its own flavor. It enhances other flavors. How come farmers put out salt for livestock? Anybody know the answer to that? They need the minerals. They need it for their muscle tone and things like that. We don't function without salt, and every human being needs 500 milligrams of salt a day. Now, generally, we need a lot more than that, but we need salt to survive. So Jesus says, you're the salt of the earth. What is he saying? The world needs you to survive. And then he says, you're the light of the world. That's weird, because who's the light of the world? Jesus is the light of the world. That's what the whole season of Epiphany is about, right? Jesus is the light of the world. And then he looks at us and says, but you're the light of the world. And we go, what are you talking about? I say that to people sometimes, you know, you're the salt of the earth, you're the light of the world, and they say to me, but I'm not Jesus. I knew that. The first time I looked at everybody in this church, I knew you're not Jesus, you're not asked to be Jesus, but you are called to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth for him, just like I am. I look in the mirror sometimes and think, is there any Jesus in there at all? Sometimes it's very hard to see. So I'm talking to me as well as to you. But you are the salt of the earth, you're the light of the world, and then we're told how to do that. If we go back to Isaiah, Isaiah, remember last week I said God had a bone to pick with the people. This week God is saying, you picking a bone with me, people, because what does he say? You know, announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob their sins, yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness. Did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God. Oh, we're about to get it here, folks. Why do you eat fast, but you do not see? Why humble yourselves, but you do not notice? They're saying to God, why do we go through all these religious rituals and things if you're not even going to look at us, Lord? God says, I don't want to see that nonsense. I don't want to see that mess. I don't want to see you humble yourself and put on your ashes and sackcloth, which people literally used to do. They would put on these old shredded clothing, and they'd cover themselves with ashes and say, oh, woe is me. Look how holy, holy, holy I am. God says, that's not what I want. You call this a fast today, except to the Lord. Is this not the fast that I choose? Here we go, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? 
Just like a child who sees what needs to be done, God says, if someone is without a home, invite them to live in yours. That's what we saw in Ukraine when people went into Poland. People, out of their understanding of letting their light shine of Jesus Christ in the world, invited strangers who didn't speak the same language into their homes to live, to get them out of the war zone. Then what does Isaiah say? If you do these things, if you feed the poor, if you invite the homeless into your house, if you break the bonds of oppression, if you work to eliminate injustice, then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your light shall break forth like the dawn, then you're going to shine. Then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. You shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. The repair of the breach, to fix what is broken, to rejoin what has been separated through sin, through our failure to do God's will, through human stubbornness and sinfulness and pain and shame, all those things will be done away and we will be called the repairers of that breach, the restorers of the streets in which to live. We're called to be light. Jesus didn't say you have it within you that you might be light, you could be light. He says all y'all got the light in you. Now I've told this story before because I love it, but it's not true. It's like George Washington and his cherry tree. I used to love old movies. When I was a kid, I'd watch every old black and white movie that came on, and Young Tom Edison came on. Anybody ever see Young Tom Edison? Mickey Rooney as Young Tom Edison. That's how old this movie was when he was a kid. He made this movie. His mother needed surgery in the day before he had invented the light bulb. And they sort of tied this into why he would go on to invent the light bulb or steal it from whoever invented it for real, if you believe those stories as well. But his mother needed surgery. It was nighttime. She was not going to make it till the morning. And he got every lantern he could find and he put in the dining room where they used to do surgeries. They'd come to your house and they'd put you on the table because things were not necessarily, didn't know a lot about cleanliness and sanitation and all those things then but there still wasn't enough light. So what he started to do was go through his home and then he went to his neighbor's house and he even broke into a store in town, got every mirror he could find and lined the room with mirrors and that created enough light. Mike played the song My Lighthouse this morning for us at the 9.30 service and lighthouse mirrors, used, lighthouse lights used to have mirrors before they could make a light strong enough. They would have a fire, you know, like we have up here with our candles they would put little mirrors in it so it would just magnify the light. And Thomas Edison in the movie, his mother was saved because of the mirrors that reflected the light. We're not called to generate light within ourselves. We can't do that. But we can certainly reflect the light that is ours in Jesus Christ. We can certainly let the salt of the earth take root in us and become salt for others so that the world has flavor, so that the world has Sometimes abrasion and the need to clean. Sometimes we can melt the snow from someone else's life. We can break through the coldness of their existence. We can preserve what is good in the world. Mostly we can add flavor, the flavor of God and the flavor of life and light to people's lives. We're going to sing in a few moments a song. Some of you aren't going to like it because it's new. That's all you need to hear, that it's a new song. Oh no, not another new song. But if you don't like the tune, listen to the words. It's a Michael Card song. It's called Light of the World. You're the light of the world, O Lord. You make your servant shine. So how could there be any darkness of me if you are the light of the world? You are the light of the world. You are the bread of life, O Lord, broken to set us free. So how could there be any hunger in me if you are the bread of life? You are the bread of life. You've overcome the world, O Lord, and given us victory. So why should I fear when trouble is near? If you've overcome the world, you have overcome the world. Wipe every tear away, O Lord, and teach us the song of the Lamb. The promise is true, but it's still up to you to wipe every tear away. Wipe every tear away. This is who God is for us, the light of the world that comes to live in us. We've got to let him shine to others because there are so many people just dwelling in darkness who do not know that they are loved, who do not know that they can be forgiven, who do not know they can have a fresh start. Let them see it in you. Let them taste the flavor of God's love for you in Jesus Christ, and you will change the world. 
Amen. Amen.